In this video, we're going to talk about some things you may or may not know or could be lied about concerning 410A refrigerant. Order supplies from the website that's made for the skilled trades. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple clicks at SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies with fast delivery anywhere in the U.S. Need help with an order? Get industry-leading after-sales service from their friendly and knowledgeable customer support team and talk to a real person every time. SupplyHouse.com Fortin A refrigerant has been around since the middle 90s, used in mass and comfort cooling. And after 2010, it pretty much took over as the primary refrigerant used in comfort cooling, especially residential comfort cooling. And it's been around for a long, long time, but it's about to go away because we have a new environmentally friendly refrigerant that's going to replace it, or a couple of them. But 410A is still widely used and actually contains some of those same refrigerants that it's being replaced with. It sounds weird to say that. But yes, 410A actually contains R32. So that's the first thing we'll talk about. What does 410A contain? Well, it contains two refrigerants, R32 and R125. R32 is slightly flammable, so you might wonder why isn't 410A slightly flammable? It's because the 125 is a, let's consider a flame retardant. It cancels out the flammability of the R32, so that 125 is used to make it a non-flammable refrigerant. And if 410A came along after 22, so 410A was obviously the green choice, so to speak, but it's not actually the green choice. And this comes back to what refrigerants are inside of it. Now, 410A does not deplete the ozone layer like R22 does. So R22 is worse in that respect, but 410A is actually worse for global warming potential. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. A lot of you look at global warming potential and ozone depleting potential and could care less about those numbers. And I'm only telling you those things is because it's kind of funny how this stuff works out where the newer refrigerant is actually worse in one area as far as environmental. It's funny to me. I may not be as attuned to the environment impact as some other people, and a lot of you guys could care less, but I think it makes for good conversation and we do need to be aware of it just so we know for Trivial Pursuit games and stuff like that. So while 410A doesn't deplete the ozone layer, it does have a higher global warming potential. So it won't destroy the earth one way, but it will in another way, basically. That's due to that 125. See, R32 is a low GWP. That's why we're using it now. It's below 1,000, it's like 600, 700 right in there. But 125 has a much higher GWP. And since the 125 and the R32 are mixed pretty much 50-50 in 410A, you can only assume that that 125 has a quite high GWP. I don't know the exact number, and I don't think it really matters what the exact number is, but it makes R410A as a whole worse in the GWP category than R22. Go figure. Sometimes I say the stuff out loud that has happened to the industry here, and it sounds kind of stupid to me. A lot of people think that because 410A is made out of multiple refrigerants, you cannot recharge a system. You have to evacuate all the refrigerant, pull the vacuum, and then recharge it up because it has two separate refrigerants and they're afraid it'll fractionate. And what that means is whenever a refrigerant leaks out of a system, the components of that particular refrigerant can leak out at different rates depending on where the leak is at. So some refrigerants like 407C have a wide range of refrigerants and where they boil off at, what pressure. So they'll have one leak more than the other. But 410A, the two refrigerants, R32 and R125, are so close that the glide or that separation between boiling points is really, really low. So you don't have to worry about that and you can recharge it. Now you do charge it as a liquid, but you still can recharge a system if it's low in R410A. Last thing is that R410A uses PoE oil. And that's pretty common these days with these 400 series refrigerants. A lot of them need PoE oil because they're not miscible with mineral oil. The big issue is R22 is mineral oil. So not so much for 410A, but when you're replacing R22 with a 400 series replacement, like 422D, B, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, whichever one you choose, those are not all available, by the way. You have to sometimes add PoE oil. There are provisions in certain refrigerants, like a hydrocarbon that allows for oil return, but in some of them, like 407C, you have to either add oil or replace the oil in order for it to work. I hope this short video came in handy for you guys and you learned a little bit about 410A. 
We'll be covering some more refrigerant stuff in the future, as well as many other exciting topics. More exciting than refrigerant sometimes, I promise you. All right, guys and gals out there, God bless you, and I'll see you on the next video. Save 8% off your order at truetechtools.com by using the Shop Talk discount code.